rights of others. I outline all this to you for the following reason. There is only one nation on earth capable of rallying and bringing together the free people on this planet to stand up to the spread of totalitarianism. There is only one nation on earth that can do that, and that is ours. The United Nations cannot do this. In fact, they cannot do anything. That doesn't mean that we're going to be involved in 15 wars or that American foreign policy needs to involve armed conflicts on every corner of the planet. It also doesn't mean we can solve every conflict. But what I'm trying to say to you is that without American engagement, the world I just painted to you is not just a possibility, it is a real probability. And I don't like to make these issues of national security partisan, because it's important that our country be united in moments like this. But we cannot ignore that the flawed foreign policy of the last few years has brought us to the stage. Because we have a president who believed that by the sheer force of his personality, he would be able to shape global events. We have a president that believed that by going around the world and giving key speeches in key places, he could shape the behavior of other nations and other people. We do not have the luxury of seeing the world the way we hope it would be. We have to see the world the way it is. And we must address these issues before they grow unmanageable. And they threaten not just our freedoms, but our economy. And that is the true challenge that we have in the 21st century. And we must confront them with a seriousness of purpose that requires an American foreign policy deeply rooted in our values and in our moral principles, in the notion that every human being has rights given to them, not by their governments or by their leaders, a right that's given to you by your creator. All human beings have these rights. <laughs> by the principle that any government and any leader who violates those rights is an illegitimate one. The president loves to point to Ronald Reagan and say, well, Reagan talked to Russia. Reagan talked to the Soviet Union. Why can't we talk to Iran? But there's a difference. Reagan dealt with the Soviet Union because they had nuclear weapons and he wanted peace. But he never accepted the Soviet Union. He called them what they were, an evil empire. He never relinquished the moral arguments that what they did was wrong and unsustainable and contrary to the rights of all men. He never ceded that ground. He did not fall victim or, or in the trap of moral relativism and foreign policy, where we somehow look the other way at these violations of human rights that occur all over the world in these countries and accept them as a normal type of government, just a different type of government. There is nothing normal or acceptable about a government that does not allow you to worship as you please. There is nothing moral or acceptable about a government that forces women to have abortions. There is nothing moral or acceptable about a government that slaughters people in the streets. There is nothing moral or acceptable about a government that jails political opponents. There is nothing moral and acceptable about governments that sponsor terrorism as a tool of statecraft. And we should never accept any of those things as a legitimate form of government. What I advocate to you on both of these fronts is that America must be involved in leading the world, not in dictating to the We don't want that role. Americans have never wanted the role of telling other people what to do. And quite frankly, we would much rather just focus on our lives here and figuring out ways to do business and trade with people all over the planet in a fair way. But we cannot ignore the reality of who we are. We cannot ignore the global importance of this nation. And we cannot ignore the implications to our future if we fail to step up to this call. If you think high taxes and regulations are bad for our economy, so is global instability and the spread of totalitarianism. If you think that Obamacare is hurting our economy, it is. So is Russia controlling the South China Sea. I'm sorry, it's the China controlling the South China Sea, if in fact they ever have the ability to do that. The foreign policy issues of our time have deep economic ramifications. But in order to exert that leadership, we need leaders that understand clearly what our role in the world is in an unapologetic way. And we also need to be able to afford it, which means we have to have an economy that sustains it. And the good news is that we have everything we need to succeed economically, except the leadership in the White House. 
We have all the we have been blessed by God with natural resources. We have been blessed with a hard working and creative people. We have been blessed with a free enterprise system of government that we need to reinvigorate, not undermine. And if we do these things, we will have a strong economy that will not only sustain and provide for our people, but will make the world a safer and better place. I always close these talks by reminding people, don't take for granted what we have. Don't fall into the trap that some of us do, and I count myself included, of taking for granted what we have in this country. What we have in America is the exception, not the rule in human history. Almost everyone who has ever lived on this planet didn't get to choose their leaders. And they didn't get to choose their life either. You were stuck doing whatever your family and your parents were stuck doing before you. What made us as exceptional and different is that here truly anyone from anywhere could accomplish anything. And if we lose that, it is so difficult to recapture it. And that's something worth fighting for. Every time I talk about how special America is, some commentator, or whoever it may be, will roll their eyes and say, well, that's just something Americans tell each other to make themselves feel good. You have the right to believe that. I don't have that option because I've seen it with my own eyes. Let me close with the 30 seconds or 45 seconds that I have left with a story that I've rarely told, maybe once or twice in a public forum, but I wanted to share with you today and I thought it was appropriate to do here. When I was running against Charlie Chris near the end of that campaign, my dad was diagnosed and with cancer, he was very sick. I reached the primary, I had a, even though he switched parties, as you recall, he was an independent, now he's a Democrat, he's running out of parties. <laughs> I had a primary. It wasn't very competitive, but I had a primary. My dad at that point was nearing the end of his life. I remember going by to see him that day. I was going to win the primary. And my nephew answered the door with a big smile. I said, what are you smiling about? I said, come in and you'll see. My dad had not been out of bed for a month and a half. He was fully dressed, sitting in a wheelchair. Because no matter how bad he felt, that night he was going to go to my victory party. Unfortunately, that night, by the end of the night, he was too tired and he couldn't make it. And I thought about it, especially after he passed, why was that so important for him? The normal answer is, that was your dad. He was proud of what you had achieved. But I realized it was so much more. You see, my dad, at nine years of age, his mother died, and he had to go to work, and he worked for 70 years. He struggled. He never made a lot of money. He was never rich. He was never famous. And I'm sure that in his darkest and most discouraging days, he wondered what his life was all about. You know what gave his life purpose and meaning? is seeing us being able to do all the things he never could. Giving us the chance to achieve the kind of life he perhaps wanted for himself, but that door never opened for them. That was his American dream, and this country made that possible. That's why I know America is special. That's why I know she's different, and that's why I know she is worth fighting for and saving, and that's why I know that that's what we will do. Thank you very much. God bless all of you. Thank you.